and welcome to this edition of Hidden History Stories from the Secret City. I'm Keith McDaniel, along with my co-host, Ray Smith. Good morning, Ray. How are you? I'm very good, Keith. How are you today? I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's almost fall-like outside, isn't it? Oh, it is. I'm looking forward to getting out and seeing some of the fall colors and enjoying it. I'm, I'm ready for fall. <laughs> oh, me, me too. Me too. Well, we, let's get right to it. We've got a, a special guest with us today. Ray, why don't you introduce our guest? We sure do. I'm really glad that we have Nick Fielder with us today. Uh, Nick and I met back in the 70s when we were, uh, Tom Goodpasture and I was doing research on the Emory Road. And, and we contacted Nick because of that. And uh, he helped us. He helped us to identify some of the locations, especially up on the Cumberland Plateau and the fact that that Oak Ridge, uh, that the Emory Road comes right through Oak Ridge was what got me hooked on it. And, and, and he was a, a, a big help. In fact, he knows more about Oak Ridge than you might think. He's lived here. He came here in 1960 and grew up here. Then he, he left a little bit. And uh, his dad was working here when, when he moved, but he went away and came back after a couple of other jobs. And then uh, uh, he got a job as the state uh, archeologist uh, with the Tennessee Historical Commission as a staff archeologist. And that was what made the connection for me. Now I've known uh, Nick for a number of years. Uh, his most recent activity was with the Tennessee State Museum, where he installed the Oak Ridge exhibit that's there. And, and Nick, I was down there just yesterday, and, and it's still looking good. So we're glad to have you with us this morning. All right. Thanks, Ray. Uh, the, uh, um, I always like talking about Oak Ridge, and um, mm -hmm. so this is a great opportunity for me. Uh, <clears throat> I actually moved to Oak Ridge in 1950 when I was 10 years old. Went, went to Willowbrook Elementary School, Robert Field Junior High, and then graduated Oak Ridge High School in um, 1960. Went on to UT and other things. But the, uh, uh, about 1958, I was going through the Oak Ridge Library and I found a book called The, the Archaeology of the Norris Basin written in 1930, in the 30s, um, based on the archaeology they did before they built Norris Dam. And I got fascinated with it, especially since some of the work they did was downstream from the dam over around Edgemore Bridge. There was a big prehistoric Indian site right there at the bridge on the other side from Oak Ridge. And so there were pictures of all the stuff they had, they had found and et cetera. And so I got fascinated. So got some buddies and myself, we went over there and uh, found the site that um, they had worked on, and crawled on our hands and knees through the through the cornfields, picking up arrowheads and pieces of pottery. And so that's how I got my interest in 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 archaeology. So my, my mother would take us over there in the morning, drop us off with a, with a sack lunch. We'd walk across the bridge talk to the farmer and go down and look at our heads. Then she'd come back at four o'clock in the afternoon, pick us up. So it, it, was, a, it was a grand experience. And so. Oh, so. Well, that, that's interesting. That, let me ask you a question about the early uh, people who were here and those villages that you found. Uh, we always think uh, that this area, obviously the treaties that, that the white settlers entered into with the Indians was with the Cherokee. But I have a friend, David Hackett, who is descended from the Yuchi Indians. Can you confirm for me that this area was occupied by the Yuchi Indians in the 1700s? The, the question of the Yuchi is one of the, one of the big questions in archaeology and anthropology. They, they're mentioned in some of the early documents, but it's not real clear who they were. And who and who uh -huh. they were affiliated with, um, um, a lot of people think that they uh, uh, that they were affiliated with the with the with the Creek or later became part of the the Creek Indian Nation, um, and mm -hmm. so uh, uh, there. 
they're not seen right now as a, as a separate tribe like the like the Cherokee. The Cherokee came in in the in the late 1600s and sort of displaced the uh, the the, Chick, the 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 Creek and the and the Uchi, and um, so they they were sort of the Northern carpetbagger kind of Indians, and so there, there's still some uh -huh. hard feelings between some of the southeastern tribes and 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 the uh, and the Cherokee. But the the Indian occupation of Oak Ridge goes back um, much longer than that, back to the uh, uh, around 11,000 uh, 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 BC, uh, and and uh, in fact, I was walking through the woods behind my house. In um, I lived on Jellico Lane up there off Johnson Road, and found a uh, uh, cool-looking artifact that I later realized was a was an Indian knife uh, dating from that that early eleven thousand year old Indian period that had just laying there in the woods, nothing else around it, and so uh, I kept it for a long time. And I I don't know I don't know where it is now, but uh, I later realized what what it was, but most of the Indians in 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 um, in Oak Ridge area lived along the Clinch River and and Poplar yeah. Creek. Um, the um, the um, and the in around the time of Christ, they started building burial mounds, and and um, so they get apparently get. <coughs> They would get together probably uh, and and have ceremonies and and bury the chief in the in in the ground and then start then build um, um, a, a mound over the top of that and then add other deceased individuals on the side of the mound add more dirt and then gradually build up the mounds. We we excavated one of those mounds in at the uh, Clinch River Breeder Reactor Project site. In in I believe it was 1974 when I when I did that project and or 75 and um, the uh, um, uh, so you know we we know a lot about them but but the the biggest sites were uh, were around 1200 1250 A.D. and there were several along the uh, 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 Poplar Creek and where Poplar Creek comes into the Clinch River. Down around the K25 area, and so, uh, but these were they were living in pole construction houses uh, uh, with, with uh, thatch roofs, and um, it, it was a very well organized society. They were primarily car corn farmers by that time, but um, those those people kind of disappeared around 1400 AD, and then later the the Cherokee and the and the Uchi and those uh, and the historic tribes um, would would come through the areas, but there were never any Cherokee villages right at uh, uh, the Oak Ridge area. Hmm. Uh, that that coincides with what David has told me about his uh, information he's learned as he's looked into it. Some some of the mounds that you talk about, I. I find interesting uh, that you may still be able to even see some evidence today. I, I wonder about, there's a cemetery on the east end of Oak Ridge and I, it's, it looks like a mound. I mean, the whole cemetery looks like mm -hmm. a mound to me. And I wish I could think of the name of the cemetery. I, I, aggravates I, me, I can't keep it. I've seen that in several places across Tennessee where where they would take a prehistoric Indian burial mound and then b bury white people on it, and so that's, yeah. that's that's entirely possible. Now there is a couple of mounds over in Friel's Bend near that Friel's cabin uh, that are still there, and they're probably about four, five, six feet high, very visible. Um, I uh -huh. uh, I was in graduate school at the University of Idaho, in in. Um, in, in, in 1974, I'd been out there for a couple of years. Uh, UT didn't have a graduate program when I finished it, archaeology at UT in 72, so I went to Idaho for a couple of years. Um, and the, I got a call from UT. They said, boy, 
do we have a deal for you? He said, we, uh, we just got a contract to do a survey of the archeological resources of the Oak Ridge Reservation. And would you like to, would you like to come and run that, that, that project? I said, hold on, I'll be there in two weeks. <laughs> and, and, and so I'd already finished all my coursework and everything, in my graduate program. So I just packed up, left my wife and kid in, in Moscow, Idaho, and, and came to Oak Ridge uh, for, uh, uh, to start that project. But um, that was a contract with Oak Ridge National Lab. And so we wrote a report on all the things that we found uh, um, on the prehistoric Indian survey, and then did another historic survey of all the the old uh, home sites across the, the reservation. And that was published by Oak Ridge National Lab also. Both of those reports are available online if anybody wants to look at them. And so um, it's, it, it will give an overview of Oak Ridge and then every, and look and show where everything was found. Well, that's good. I'll, I'll look those up and, uh, and, and make that link available to people or those links because I think that would be of interest. The cemetery that I was trying to remember is the Worthington Cemetery. Okay. You're probably familiar with where it is yeah. on, the, on the east end of town near Elza Gate there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's interesting. That The whole area there has got much more history than just from 1942 forward. And uh, I, I was asked by the uh, Oak Ridge Neighbors magazine to do a, a, a little article for them this next month about the history before Oak Ridge. Now, I can only go back to the communities. I wish I had talked to you. Maybe you and I could do another article where we talk about the earlier history yeah. of Oak Ridge. So I'll yeah, work with you that. on that. You, you sure got a lot of good information there. Okay. Uh, talk to us a little about the Emory Road. There were a whole series of roads um, 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 across Tennessee uh, uh, in the early days, and uh, the, uh, uh, they were just basically just wagon trails hacked out through the hacked out through the, the forest, um, and but they were they were maintained. Now, now you know more than the, the details of the Emory Road than than I do, but but we we found good evidence. I think that it came right through uh, Oak Ridge and crossed the creek right down there near the um, um, the old Wildcat Den, and and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, what's now the what's the, was it was the teenage hangout when I was in school, and now it's a senior citizen center, which is appropriate, I guess. Um, but uh, the uh, uh, so it came uh, right uh, let, there. let me, yeah, wait, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, let me interrupt you just a minute because we can't let that go by. No. Uh, you've been away from Oak Ridge too long. Uh, that Midtown Community Center that was the Wildcat then during your days has now been turned over to the Oak Ridge Heritage and Preservation Association, the local historical society. Oh, yeah. And, and they've, they've been in that building for a number of years and most recently have created the Oak Ridge History Museum. And it's got some excellent exhibits in it about the history of Oak Ridge, primarily during the Manhattan Project, but also have just recently added a, uh, a display, a temporary display on the integration of Oak Ridge schools or desegregation of Oak Ridge schools in 1955 with the, what they call in the Oak Ridge 85. And that, that's a, a really good display that's there. And the, the museum is one that you really ought to come back to Oak Ridge and, and let me take you on a tour and we'd go through that museum. And while we're talking museums, the K-25, History Center is also open again. It, it opened uh, sec uh, the last week in February of 2020, then had to close two weeks later because of the COVID. But uh, we need to get you back in Oak Ridge oh, and yeah. go through these. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And uh, then um, the, uh, yeah, no, no, I'll be glad to do that. And yeah, thank, yeah. thanks for the update. And it just shows, <laughs> yeah. shows, shows that, yeah. that, that there's a lot of good things going on in Oak Ridge right now. 
Yeah, there he is. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of things happening. And, and, uh, and some of the things like, for example, the K-25 site, as you will remember it, all of those buildings or most all of them are gone now. And uh, even no one where the K-31, 33 site was, those buildings are gone. It's just a, a, a brownfield area now. And the uh, Kairos Power Company is coming in to build a demonstration reactor on that site. And we've got a, uh, got a isotope manufacturer that's building on Duck Island in the Clinch River. You'll, you'll know exactly where that is. Yeah. So there are yeah, lots of things happening around Oak Ridge and, and the, the museums are open. And uh, I took a tour of 33 people through there uh, just earlier this week and had a wonderful time. They were from Florida, just a bus tour that came through and we hit the museums in Oak Ridge. And oh, you, you, so you really do need to come and take a look. I, okay? I, I will. I'll, I'll take advantage of Ray Smith, the official history tour guide in Oak Ridge here. <laughs> you got a tour. I'll be, I'll be glad to do that for you anytime you don't want to come. And, you just and, let me know and we'll and take care of it. I was really <laughs> proud to see you be made a member of the Tennessee Historical Commission too. That 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 yeah. that pleased me a, a, a great deal to see that. Well, well, thank you. I I enjoy being a being a part of that. We in fact had a meeting yesterday, and oh by the way, at that meeting we approved two new historical markers that are going in to Oak Ridge. One of them is for the Oak Ridge Institute for Nuclear Studies what was the turned into Oak Ridge Associated Universities, but uh, it was located over near the hospital for many years. That's where they did a lot of cancer research and treatment of cancer. Uh, and uh, uh, that will have a sign up there that uh, right near the hospital. And the second one is the one for the uh, outdoor swimming pool. We've got a <laughs> historical marker approved for it too. And we've got some that are being worked on, uh, actually already approved, I think, for uh, the, the, the Oak Ridge 85, the, the desegregation of the high school and the Robertsville Junior High. So we're able to get some historical markers. And, and oh, by the way, a couple of years ago, we actually had the Tennessee Historical Commission meeting in Oak Ridge. First time that had ever oh, happened. Great. So I got to take the entire commission on a tour of Oak Ridge, we had a had a really good time. So I I know you appreciate what the commission does, and it's and it's yeah. uh, it, it's heartfelt for me. I do too now that I'm a part of it. And thank you for mentioning hey, that. Yeah. You will appreciate this story. I went to work for the historical commission in in 1976, and one of the first things I did was get them aware of, of how significant. <clears throat> the Solway Bridge was in terms of construction and design. Yeah. And so, but they had already built the new bridge there across yeah. the river by that time. And so I said, is there any, I, I asked the Coast Guard, I said, or, or, um, or TDOT, I said, is there any way to save that bridge as a pedestrian bridge or a bicycle bridge or something? And they said, well, we'll, we'll look into it. And the um, um, the Coast Guard even sent a small cutter up there to try to get between the the new bridge pilings or supports and the and, and the old bridge. And they said we can just barely get through, and these coal barges that go up down the river wouldn't be able to make it. So that 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 bridge is going to have to come down. So, so I I tried my best to save the Solway Bridge, but it was too late. Well, I understand it was a it was a unique bridge. It was a bit narrow when you drove across it. You realize you're getting close to the oncoming traffic. But it, uh, it it those arches are unique. And and oh by the way, you've done a really good uh, artist drawing uh, of the bridge. I have a copy of that. Oh good, and, thank uh, you. And you you did a good job on that. Not only that, you've done some other art too that. Uh, that I'm proud to see you're doing the one of Oppenheimer with his eyes that have a, a mushroom cloud reflected in it. That's <laughs> yeah. kind of unique too. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, but that's all. Go ahead. 
no, that uh, I enjoyed doing those and the Oppenheimer uh, um, painting, uh, which is called Nuclear Sunrise um, uh, um, or Nuclear Dawn, is now <clears throat> now owned by the by the museum as part of their their permanent collection. Collection, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate you making that making that available to them. That was that's good. And uh, again, I'm I'm proud of my copy of the Saul Bridge. So. Well, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Nick. Let's get back to the Emory Road. I had a question about that. Where did it Where did it start and where did it end? Uh, I'm not I'm not sure. I think Ray's got a. I think it comes all the way into Na Ray doesn't it come all the way into Nashville. It, it does. It actually starts at the bottom of the Clinch mountain at Blaine, Tennessee, and comes uh, comes through Oak Ridge, goes up on the Cumberland Plateau, up to Monterey, and then crosses over the Cumberland River and comes down into Nashville from the north side mm. of the of the river, yeah. which is unusual. I mean, when they when they drove some cattle across there back in the in the late 1700s, they actually came through in December and the Cumberland River was frozen. They mm -hmm. walked the cattle across on the ice. Yeah. They, so yeah, the road does go to Nashville. Yeah. It comes in, it comes in on Dickerson Pike. If you know, if you know Nashville, it comes in on one of the one of the old roads, Dickerson Pike. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 you're you're exactly right. And uh, of course the Walton Road came in a little later in the 1790s. And that became more of the main road. Uh, you got to realize that although the Cherokee uh, treated with the white settlers to only allow them to use one road through their hunting ground, the white settlers never really adhered to that. They would take whichever route they wanted to, but they built Southwest Point so that they could actually uh, escort the settlers going through with, a, with a, uh, an armed escort. And of course, you know the story about Bigfoot Spencer. His rock is there in the, as you come down into Crab Orchard where the Indians ambushed him and killed him in yep. 1794. The but mountain's the, named for him and the rock. Southwest has been rebuilt there in, in Kingston and it's a nice little day, little day trip from, from Oak Ridge. Yeah, yeah you're right. One of the things about Southwest Point, I've been rereading the, the journals of Lewis and Clark, and they picked up several soldiers from Southwest Point to accompany the, the, the team of soldiers on, on, the, on the Lewis and Clark expedition. Hmm. I did not know that connection. That's, that's interesting that they brought them from East Tennessee and, and took them out West. That's interesting. Yeah. So they must have been coming through on the way from Washington, D.C. and and then, you know, stop at the military post and said, hey, does anybody want to go out West? <laughs> I can just hear that conversation. And there would have been some of them that would have jumped at it and said, uh -huh. yeah, I'd like to go. You know, I mean, they're going to be gone for months, but Hey, I'd like to go. <laughs> Nick, what are some of the uh, what are some of the the stories about Oak Ridge? Maybe uh, getting getting a little bit more into hidden history. Um, maybe not as far back as as the as the Indians, but um, more recently, the last hundred years or so. Okay, they. Uh, uh, if you look at the old maps, you'll you'll see several little communities. Community of Wheat, Robertsville, Scarborough, uh, that, that they were all viable um, 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 little farm communities, and the uh, there was a, there was a um, um, corn grist mills and just sort of a just sort of normal um, East Tennessee pioneer activity was going on here. The uh, and then when when they identified it to be acquired for the Manhattan Project, they one of the main reasons it was picked was because of the availability of electrical power from TVA. Also, the fact that it was surrounded by the Clinch River 
made a nice natural barrier. And um, then it also had, it had um, rail access over on at Elza Gate or the Elza um, um, location. And so it, it, it fit all their needs and there were pro approximately a thousand uh, uh, parcels of land acquired and, and the Corps of Engineers just moved in and said, basically you've got a couple of weeks or a month to move out, which we're taking this land. <coughs> I, I saw a, um, a letter in the Oak Ridge Library archives one time where this family had written to the War Department uh, um, saying that they had been moved off of a TVA lake um, in, in East Tennessee and had moved down there near, near uh, 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 Robertsville. And now, <coughs> and now the government was taking their land again. Was there anything they could do about it? And the, the answer was no. <laughs> and, uh, no, no but. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Some of the people were disturbed because they had to move. Most of them understood that they were doing something to help win the war. But one particular family, the George Anderson family, the daughter decided that they should go to court. So she went out and took pictures of all of the structures on that farm. The farm was right in the, the uh, northwest portion of Bear Creek Valley where Y-12 is today. And uh, <clears throat> she took some, a whole series of pictures of the, of the farm and showing the size of it and showing the, the structures that were on it. They went to court to try to get more money and they didn't get any money, but but I got a really good set of pictures that me and Keith have used in the documentary films that he made. Yeah. But uh, they the average average paid about forty eight dollars an acre for the land. Many of them didn't get their money till after the war, but but they were paid for their land, but not given any help to move. They were just told to get off of it. Yeah, and they were and they were just given money for the land. I mean, they're they're. There was no real money for improvements or, you know, the, right. the, the hard work that they had put in over the years to develop farmlands or whatever. So it was just purely the, the real estate. When, when yeah, it was. And, and uh, Nick, you, you'll know this. Several of those homes were used during the Manhattan Project. They were actually used. Some of them, they put people in them to live in them. And some of them were yeah. used for offices and for training. And I'm sure in your looking around the Oak Ridge Reservation, you found some of the uh, even log cabin structures that were left. Uh, yeah. yeah, we did. We, we had the 1939 and 1941 um, uh, TVA USGS quadrangle maps that had that showed where the individual houses and, and barns were. And, and we went back and yeah. revisited each of those sites, and some of the some of the log houses were still standing, um, um, particularly one back in the backwoods. That were, were, and you know th there was uh, uh, some of the cemeteries, uh, family cemeteries back in there as well. And but um, the uh, um, some of the houses they just walked away from them, and and you know just. Uh, there was stuff laying around in the yard, just like it had been when they left in, in, in 1942. Hey, yeah. speaking of cemeteries, tell, tell the story. So some people may, may not know this. Tell the story about the cemeteries in Oak Ridge. I mean, um, my, and I could be wrong, but my understanding was that the cemeteries, uh, a, part of the, a part of the agreement to come in were to leave, uh, were to leave the family cemeteries intact. In and not move them. Uh, maybe you can expand, maybe you or right one can expand on that a little bit more. Yeah, it's, it's my understanding that that was one of the negotiating points in, in getting them to, to, to leave their land that, that they said that the family cemetery would be fenced off and maintained and that they would have visitation access uh, uh, in the future. So that they could, they could always come back on Memorial Day and mark and, and decorate the, the the graves of their their ancestors, and rather than move the 
move the cemeteries and and that that um, that continued or it continues even into into the day and um, uh, you, you're correct the the, uh, uh, the New Hope Cemetery at, at the entrance to Y12 in Bear Creek Valley is one I'm most familiar with I'm also familiar with uh, a couple of others and when family the the ruling is if you're a family in other words if you've got people buried in that cemetery then you can have access to it and and what we would do is we would escort those people to those cemeteries uh, in fact anytime they wanted to and you'll remember uh keith you'll remember don raby mm -hmm. don is buried in the new hope cemetery and he's the most recent burial there that i'm aware of Hmm. because I helped to coordinate that when I was working at Y-12. But, but uh, Nick is correct. The people in the families, not only can they visit the cemeteries, they can still be buried there if they desire to. Hmm. And the little communities, uh, Nick, uh, the New Bethel community that's over near the Oak Ridge National Laboratory where the church is still there and the cemetery is there, they still have their annual reunion on Memorial Day each year. And of course the wheat community, they just had their reunion this past week. They do it the first Sunday in October and they're still doing that, what some 75 years yeah. later, still yeah. having reunions in, yeah. in those two at the George Jones uh, yeah. Baptist Church. Right, that's the George Jones Memorial Baptist Church and it's it's still standing and, uh, and and the, the cemetery is there with it. And there's a greenway. Uh, you can walk right up to it. And, and uh, also they've got a historical marker now for the Poplar Creek Seminary that was located up on the top of the rise, just, uh, just east and a little bit south of the, of the George Jones Church. Uh, so that's, that, and even the, the area where you mentioned about the grist mill, <clears throat> back there where the, <clears throat> excuse me, where Poplar Creek runs, uh, runs into, uh, Bear Creek runs into it, Poplar Creek, uh, East Fork of Poplar Creek runs into Poplar Creek. There's uh, still evidence of that uh, grist mill back there. In fact, you've got to know what to look for. It's, there are rocks that are in, in the stream that you can actually tell where, where that, that grist mill sat. And that area got lots of hiking trails back in there now that uh, you can find evidence of those original uh, houses. The things like the rock steps are still there for some of them. And, and you, can, you can still see evidence of where uh, people live back in, back in that area. It's, it's some good hiking back in there. Yeah, one of, the, one of the things when we did our archeology span survey in 74, they gave us radiation badges and dosimeters to carry and marked on our maps areas that we were not supposed to dig in. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and uh, the, the, the uh, um, but one of the times we were, they were, they were looking to expand the White Oak Creek burial ground. Um, and so we were over there doing some testing uh, um, near White Oak Lake, and, and um, while while we were doing our our testing, some some guys came in with a backhoe, started digging into the burial ground, and we asked them what they were doing. They said somebody buried something by mistake, and we're we're out here to find it and bring <laughs> and recover it. So so there <laughs> there there's all kinds of stories um, about. Um, um, Oak Ridge survey that was unlike any other archaeology project I ever did, except for when I was in graduate school in Idaho, we we got a contract to go down to the Hanford Reservation and do some t testing next to the Columbia River, and so we were digging holes, uh, looking for a prehistoric Indian site there, and the health physicists from Hanford would come down to our dig every day and, and check our, 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 our pits to see if anything was leaking out of the walls. So I, so mm -hmm. I, 
<laughs> I guess I guess that's the kind of the case all over the country on these nuclear sites, you know. Yeah, so so I've I've, I've got a few little <laughs> special stories about working on nu on nuclear sites that no other archaeologist does. I bet. <laughs> Good my. Uh, uh, I'm sure that's true. <clears throat> There's one one story that Gordon Fee tells about digging in a burial a burial site, not not an archaeological site, one in Oak Ridge where they were were burying things from uh, from the work here. He uh, <laughs> he got noticed that uh, that there was going to be a tour of Building 9731 on uh, oh in a, in the coming few days, and and he was told to clean that building up. Now it had been sitting empty for for some period of time. <clears throat> so he sent uh, an individual down there and told them to clean it up. And they did. They, they took a lot of stuff out. That's when they took out some of the Calutron control panels. And one of the things that they took away was a periodic table a, on a wooden chart of a periodic table, noting all of the elements that had been separated into isotopes in that building. And they didn't realize that they, they just, you know, were throwing away the trash. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a month or so later, Chris Kime went through that building and was looking for that uh, periodic table. And when he couldn't find it, he went to Gordon. Gordon was a plant manager at the time and said, you've thrown away the most important artifact we have from that building. So, so Gordon sent them back up to dig it up. <laughs> they dug and dug and dug, but they never did find it. Right. He regrets to this day losing that periodic table. <laughs> but we've got one over Beta 3, building 9204-3, that has has the elements on it and shows what uh, what they've done. So now that's, Chris, Chris Kime's son is a friend of mine here in Nashville. I'll, 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 I'll ask him about that story. Yeah, I, I bet you his dad told him about that. You're right, Bob Kine. I, you talked to him about it. I bet he'll remember it. <laughs> Nick, is there anything, as we wrap kind of things up here in the next little bit, is there anything, any other stories, good stories you could tell us about Oak Ridge that you think the people would be interested in hearing? The, uh, let me mention about the State Museum a little bit, and how, how some of that stuff came together. The... Uh, 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 we wanted to show the uh, 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 what what Oak Ridge really produced was the the material that went into the the first bomb, and but but it was the people of Oak Ridge that 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 made the difference that 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 that, that actually did the work, et cetera. So uh, we we've got a lot of the photographs, of course, by. By Ed that that Ed did, and but the uh, um, my my first father-in-law for my first wife um, had had worked at K25, and he had one of his uh, the certificate signed by the Secretary of War uh, thanking him for working on on uh, uh, the Manhattan Project, and dated August 6, 1945. So I. I, I donated that to the museum and included it in, in the exhibit. And uh, one, one of the atom bomb pins, one of the silver atom bomb pins um, was, was donated. But we, and then we, we got a, uh, a Calutron stool from, from, the, uh, from uh, the Oak Ridge Museum uh, um, given to us that is for future exhibits. So, but, but we, we tried to 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 uh, to incorporate uh, uh, things that people could relate to, and and so um, I'm I'm glad that the the Oak Ridge exhibit turned out the way it did in the museum because that's very much a part of of, of Tennessee history. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've done a good job there on that exhibit. Like I say, I was there yesterday. It's looking good. And uh, also, you you were, I believe, were involved in getting that model of Little Boy that's in the military, State Military Museum. Is that correct? 
um, I did some research on it. What when when we first talked to the um, the, the exhibit designers, their idea was to use that model of Little Boy and suspend it from the ceiling of the new museum. So you looked up to see what the people in Hiroshima saw coming down uh, on August the sixth. And I said, "What? Hey, 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 hey! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Let let let's not go there." <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 Good for uh, you. <laughs> but, 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 but that 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 model is still in the in the war museum at the, yeah. at the state state. It is, and and it it did come from Oak Ridge. It, yeah. uh, it I think it's the one that was at the original American well the American Museum of Nuclear Energy. Or atomic energy uh, yeah. before it was changed to uh, yeah. uh, to American Museum of Science and Energy. In, in, but, in, uh, in, in fact, it was it was manufactured by Watchwell and set outside, but it's it's missing a lot of the the the, the critical details that that a that, that an accurate model would have. Yeah, I, I understand. And there's also a model now in the K25 History Center. Oh, and good. I've been talking to Y12 folks about that person that made that model, making one for for Y12. We'd like to have one out there at the New Hope Center. So oh, yeah. maybe we'll get that get that done. Well, I tell you, Nick, it's been really good to talk with you, and uh, I look forward to taking you back to Oak Ridge. You just let me know when right. you want to go. Okay. I'll definitely take you up on that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ray. Um, do we have anybody lined up for our next one in a couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, I'm talking with John Jefferson, who worked with uh, Dr. Bill Bass to write the books uh, about the body farm at UT. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote one, they wrote one, The Bones of Betrayal, about Oak Ridge. So if I can connect with him, John will be our next guest. If not, we'll, uh, we'll schedule someone else. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ray. Nick, thank you both and folks thanks for watching and uh we'll see you again in a couple of weeks all right thank you thanks guys <laughs>